Unto each thing is given a role to play in the world that fits perfectly with all others. With each turn of every tiny wheel, civilization spreads to cover the world, and order and prosperity flow forth. A quote from the Order of Numbers. Abadar, master of the first vault, god of cities, law, merchants, and wealth. His alignment is lawful neutral, and his domains include earth, law, nobility, protection, and travel. His favorite weapon is the crossbow. Centers of worship for him include Absalom, Andoran, Brevoy, Cheliax, Ketepesh, Mana Wastes, Molthun, Nex, Osirian, Nargava, Taldor, and Varicia, and his nationality is considered Taldane. Abadar is a patient, calculating, and far-seeing deity who wishes to bring civilization to the frontiers, order to the wilds, and wealth to all who support the rule of law. His primary desire is to see the purifying spread of civilization, enlightening the dark corners of the world and revealing the clockwork perfection of the cosmos. His nature is not hasty, for the pace of society's reach is slow but relentless. He strikes a careful balance between good and evil, seeing benefits on both sides and refusing to endorse one or the other. His followers believe he is responsible for enlightening the various humanoid races from simple tribes to being capable of creating huge cities. He puts words of diplomacy in the mouths of leaders, guides the pens of those who write laws, and steers coins into the hands of those who practice fair commerce. The god of cities is stern, but rewards those who work hard and whose actions benefit others as well as themselves, though he is morally ambiguous enough to recognize that not every person can benefit from every decision. He frowns on the misuse of slaves or beasts of burden, considering it a waste of resources and detrimental to the profitability of civilization as a whole. He views using cheap laborers rather than slaves as a better option, as then the workers can use their funds to participate in commerce and rise above their low station through established economic channels. Abadar understands, however, that the world changes in small increments, and that most advantageous option for a society is not always the most workable in the present. He respects cautious thought and rejects impulsiveness, seeing it as a base and destructive whim. He teaches that discipline, keen judgment, and following the law eventually lead to wealth, comfort, and happiness. He does not believe in free handouts, and because of this, his temples sell potions and healing spells or scrolls, rather than giving them to those in need. Any who to protest are directed to a temple of Serenre. Abadar is the master and guardian of the first vault, a magical trove in his realm where a perfect version of every type of creature and object exists. A perfect sword, a perfect deer, a perfect wheel, and even a perfect law. His mortal artisans and artists attempt to emulate these perfect forms, inspired by Abadar's mentoring. Likewise, his arbiters and judges keep these idolized laws in mind when crafting new laws or ruling on existing ones. It is said that centuries ago Abadar allowed mortals to visit the first vault in dreams, the better to inspire them. There has been no record of such coveted visions occurring in a long time, however, perhaps because he has not found someone worthy, because he fears his enemies might steal the perfect forms, or because he is carefully pacing the advance of current civilizations to prevent them from growing too big too quickly and dissolving before they reach their peak. His primary worshippers are aristocrats, artisans, judges, 
lawyers, merchants, and politicians, all of whom benefit from the established laws of commerce. Those who are poor or who have been wronged also worship him, praying that he might reverse their ill fortune, or most mortals seek wealth and happiness that it brings. He expects his followers to abide by local laws, though not foolish, contradictory, toothless, or purposeless mandates, and to work to promote order and peace. He has no tolerance for gambling or excessive drinking, or drug use, as despite the lucrative nature of these industries, such vices inevitably weaken society rather than strengthening it. Worshippers who lose Abadar's favor might find themselves short on money in a crucial time, tongue-tied in the middle of an important deal, or stymied in their craft or art. When he is pleased, deals are more profitable than expected, projects are completed early, and journeys to or within a city take less time than normal. His intervention in the mortal world is subtle, for he expects worshippers to do their own work. It usually takes the form of hints or opportunities, rather than direct gifts. Abadar is depicted as a handsome man with black hair dressed in fine garments, often with a gold cloak over a golden breastplate, and bearing many keys. Humans, dwarves, and gnomes show him with a beard, whereas elves show him beardless and with long braids tied with golden thread. His voice is pleasant and even, his words firm but not harsh. Abadar's holy symbol is a golden key, often with a city image on the head. His clergy is made up almost entirely of clerics, with a small number of paladins. Because of the emphasis on cities and civilization, he almost never has adepts among his priesthood. Even the most remote settlements, paying homage to Avadar, are watched over by at least a cleric or a paladin. He is called the Master of the First Vault, Judge of the Gods, and the Gold-Fisted. The worship of Abadar is both functional and theological. It is an excellent everyday faith, for it deals with matters that directly affect daily life. The churches of Abadar in each city encourage friendly competition with other cities to promote trade. Church law forbids clergy from attacking each other, regardless of political, national, or financial motivations as warfare creates instability, and chips away at the foundations of civilization. Thus, in wartime, the churches of Abadar often become neutral territory, not participating in the struggle and acting as safe havens and mediators in the conflict. Priests of Abadar within a given city or temple arrange themselves in a set hierarchy, as in a mercantile house. The head of a smaller temple is called a banker, while the leaders of larger temples or greater geographical areas are called archbankers. The church defines itself by its wealth, counting coins as blessings of Abadar. Competition between priest-backed businesses and their ventures remains friendly, and making money is at once a holy duty, a serious pursuit, and a beloved pastime with all the fun and excitement of an organized sport. Abadar's faith can be found anywhere people strive to make civilization work. It is most common in large cities, and its greatest holy site in the inner sea region is the Bank of Absalom. At this center of trade, the blessing of commerce flows out into the world, and the ark bankers can control the interest rates and help adjust the economies of the nations that deal with its great vaults to maximize trade's benefits. Of course, 
this wonder of commerce is still only a shadow of the great banking houses in Abadar's distinct district of Octoon, in the eternal city of Axis. Services to Abadar include songs with complex harmonies, generally accompanied by hammered instruments, such as dulcimers and glockenspiels, and the counting of sorting of coins or keys, often in time with the singing of music. Services and ceremonies take place indoors, representing the shelter of civilization. Worshippers unable to reach an actual building make do with at least a crude structure or even a sloping wall or cave that provides protection from the elements. Services usually take place in the morning, and it is customary to thank Abadar before and after a profitable or advantageous transaction. Abadar's temples are elaborate buildings with rich decorations and high, thick stained glass windows. These windows have heavy frames, to guard against thieves, and usually feature vivid yellow glass that casts a golden hue on everything within the church. Most temples have a guarded vault for church treasures and wealth, and many also rent space in their vaults to those who wish to keep something safe and their valuables to be well guarded. Any temple in a small town or larger settlement also serves as a bank of currency exchange and money lending, which helps keep interest rates reasonable and consistent, while Abadar's clergy see making a profit off such exchanges as a holy duty. Their loans and deals are rarely predatory or exploitive, as such practices weaken and destabilize the populace. The banker in charge of the temple watches the local economy and adjusts interest to stimulate growth, encourage investment, and help recover from disaster. As priests often serve as lawyers or judges, the temples are usually built near courthouses. Abadar's followers believe in advancing civilization, teaching the unenlightened about systems and trade, driving commerce in pursuit of comfort and happiness, and the idea that fairness lies in both the letter and the spirit of the law. They promote cooperation and believe the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, but also feel that self-interest is the best motivating factor for individuals within a society. While they have an acquisitive bent, they are thrifty rather than miserly, and know that helping their neighbors attain prosperity improves the lot of everyone, themselves included. They turn trails into roads and towns into cities, eliminate monsters and troublemakers in urban and rural areas, educate disputes, make legal rulings, and reassure law-abiding people that the forces of order are watching over them. Many urban clerics work within the local legal system as judges, lawyers, and clerks, often donating their services much as a healing-oriented church might run a hospice or give food to the needy, although they are not usually politicians or part of the city's government. In wilder areas, clerics act as judge and jury, seeking out threats to civilization and eliminating them. Younger priests who are physically fit often do tours through smaller towns and frontier areas to carry news, act as wandering magistrates, and make sure that order leaves its footprint. As an arbiter of justice, each priest traditionally carries a single golden-headed crossbow bolt for when a criminal must be executed. This bolt goes to the dead criminal's family as compensation for the loss and as an initial stake to begin making an honest living. Although Abadar's temples are mercenary when it comes to providing healing, 
they are generous when protecting the public health, seeing it as an important component of their role as guardians of civilization. Likewise, when traveling with others, such as in an adventuring party, clerics of Abadar do not charge their companions for healing, seeing it as an equivalent service for a fighter's sword or a ranger's shooting. Like a business, questing and traveling requires teamwork, and it is part of the cleric's responsibility to provide healing and magical support for an equal share of the eventual profits. A typical day for a priest involves waking at an appropriate time, breakfast, prayer and the preparation of spells, reading or listening to the local news for anything worth investigating, and a period of work. At night there is a brief prayer before the evening meal, and the evening is reserved for hobbies, time with family, or other non-work interests. Most clerics of Abadar have at least uh, some knowledge of local things going on, in order to be familiar with the laws of their home cities. Most also dabble in nobility and studying them, or practice of some sort of craft or profession, always something useful to a developing or established settlement. Clerics are not permitted to give money to those in need, only to lend it at a fair rate and record the transaction for the church's record. They are required to tithe, and most clerics give a small investment in a local business that generate enough income to cover the tithe. Those whose talents for dealing with people exceed their business acumen often work as teachers, educating children and adults so they can advance themselves and better serve the community. Every cleric belongs to a particular temple, even those touring remote areas. If circumstances warrant distant travel or a long period near another city, the home temple files paperwork transferring the cleric's affiliation to a closer temple. Inquisitors of Abadar, known as taxmasters, confront the perpetrators of fraudulent payments and tax dodging, tracking down stolen goods, and battle thieves' guilds. Local officials usually grant them the legal right to threaten, punish, or even injure those who withhold the revenue that allows civilization to persist and grow, although the inquisitors are just as likely to turn around and rebuke nobles and other leaders who set taxes excessively high for a mere personal gain. Hated and feared by most people, the taxmasters usually wear gold masks or mustard yellow veils to protect their identities while performing these duties. Like clerics, inquisitors who serve Abadar usually belong to a specific temple and have established theories and territories in which they perform their legal functions. Old, infirm, or recuperating taxmasters do most of the research that finds evidence of financial cheating. A typical inquisitor has uh, the ability to intimidate knowledge about local and nobles in the area, and the ability to properly sense the motive of those he's interacting with. A taxmaster also might find it useful to have the ability to diplomatize not only for gathering information, but also to assure citizens that innocent mistakes that result in failure to pay taxes can be corrected but not punished. Paladins of Abadar are not common, as their virtuous zeal does not mesh well with the more balanced approach to ethics that the master of the first vault practices. But the god understands that an advance force for good is sometimes the best way for dealing with threats to civilization. Their specialized interests and abilities sometimes lead them to work behind the scenes in lawful evil nations, where the leaders are exploiting the economy 
at the expense of their subjects. Paladins tend to be more fiscally aggressive than their cleric counterparts, using their wealth to inspire others to join the cause, and be willing to invest in promising enterprises, take loss on a deal in order to motivate trade, and take greater risks with their money. Of all the neutral gods, only Abadar supports and promotes a holy order of paladins. As the god of civilization and order, Abadar recognizes the value of holy warriors in advancing society's aims. His paladins follow the standard paladin code of protecting the innocent, acting with honor and honesty, and respecting lawful authority. In addition, an Abadaran paladin upholds the following creed. I am a protector of the roadways and keep travelers from harm, no matter their destination or goals, if they are peaceable and legitimate travelers who harm no others on the road, I will ensure that they pass safely. Bandits are a plague. Under my will they come to justice. If they will not come willingly before the law, where they can protest for justice in the courts, they will come under the power of my sword. Corruption in the courts is the greatest corruption of civilization. Without confidence in justice, citizens cannot believe in their countries, and civilization begins to disappear. I will root out corruption wherever I find it, and if a system is fundamentally flawed, I will work to aid citizens by reforming or replacing it. I am an aid to the markets. I ensure equitable trade between merchants and citizens. Theft and deceit on either side is intolerable. I make opportunities and teach others to recognize them. When I aid others, I open the way for them, but I will not carry them. They must take responsibility. The bulk of Abadar's worshippers work as judges, lawyers, merchants, and all the other roles necessary for keeping a society running smoothly. Relatively few are adventurers. The pursuit of adventuring as a way of making a living is an indication that the local society has failed or broken down. Most of Abadar's worshippers who become adventurers believe that they have a holy calling to extend the reach of their god into places where civilization has been forgotten. For the most part, if you call Abadar your master, you believe strongly in eliminating agents of chaos, destroying monsters that threaten rural and urban society, teaching the unenlightened about systems and trade, and displaying the truth that law brings. You often meditate between opponents, and believe that fairness lies in both the letter and the spirit of the law. Adventurers and explorers who worship Abadar rarely embark on solo expeditions, for they see adventuring parties as microcosms of society, and believe strongly in the power of cooperation and the idea that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. While priests of Abadar usually change and charge random petitioners for healing, the merchant god followers are thrifty rather than miserly and know that keeping their adventuring companions and others healthy and sharing resources with them will likely increase the wealth of everyone involved down the road. Ritual garb for religious ceremonies includes white silk cloth trimmed with gold thread, a belt or necklace of gold links bearing a golden key, and a half cloak of deep yellow or gold. Ceremonial items are always crafted out of precious metals if available, 
and often decorated with gems or inlays, though not to the extent that the item becomes fragile or unusable. In casual situations, the faithful try to maintain an air of prosperity, or at least a tidy appearance, as a shabby, dirty person is a poor representative of wealth and civilization. The average cleric of Abadar is rarely without numerous documents related to the internal process of the church, but their holiest texts have more educational focus. The Order of Numbers, the faith's most core text, reads more like a charter of a city or legal treaties than a religious text and priests commission elaborately decorated copies to generate business in the community. More than two dozen carefully indexed chapters detail the beliefs and taboos of the church, and each copy has space for notes on local news, all the ways such laws interact with the church's doctrines, names of key figures in the city, and so on. The possessing of a copy which once belonged to a prestigious family or was passed down from a respected church official is a great honor. The Manual of City Building Bound in heavy leather with bronze clasps and the corners to protect it from being damaged from the heavy use it sees, this manual contains comprehensive advice on founding a town and building it into a city including planning for roads, trade, defenses, utilities, expansion, and so on. The city updates the text every few years, and most older copies have substantial appendixes for revisions and footnotes. The oldest church in the city usually keeps a copy of this book on a special consecrated table, especially if the church is responsible for the city's founding. All of the Church of Abadar observed holidays have to do with trade or civilization. Markets Door This holiday marks the first day the markets received goods from the fall harvest. The actual date varies from year to year, but using historical trends and divination, the Church determines the exact date and announces it a month in advance. Before the group and the market opens, a priest blesses the market area and leads a group prayer for all present, thanking Abadar and asking him to look favorably upon this season's business. In cities where vendors must pay a fee in order to use the market, the church usually subsidiates a portion of the fee on this day. Tax Fest the Church views the annual collecting of taxes as a cause for celebration, seeing fair taxation as a necessary part of the building and maintenance of civilization. Whenever possible, the Church sends a priest with each tax collector to ensure that the process is respectful and to make sure that the taxpayer knows the collection is being monitored. Once all monies have been collected, the church opens up its doors and invites the townsfolk to participate in an enormous feast with their civic leaders, both to help the experience remain positive and to give the commoners a chance to express their opinions on how to newly collect funds and how they ought to be spent. Abadar is the god of cities, and the sayings of his followers are commonplace in urban areas. So it is judged. Abadar's approval of any legal verdict is invoked with this phrase. 
it also traditionally follows Abhidharan prayers or blessings, weddings, a legal and religious matter, and funerals. Superstitious folk whisper it whenever an act in the natural world supports their idea of law and justice, and many gamblers say it when chance goes in their favor, a mildly sacrilegious jest. This can help us all. Abadar's church doesn't believe in giving handouts, so most adherents choose to celebrate holidays by giving practical gifts such as tools, musical instruments, or even simple services like chopping a cord of wood or watching children. These gifts strengthen the community bonds and demonstrate the advantages of civilization, and this phrase expresses thanks on behalf of both the individual and the community as a whole. Abadar understands that an advanced civilization has its spiritual needs met by many different gods, and thus maintains an approachable coolness with other deities and how they are concerned with one another. Only those who directly oppose his beliefs and purpose, notably Rovagug and to a lesser extent Lamashtu, are his declared enemies, and even then he might be open to negotiation though these opportunities rarely present themselves. He despises Norgaber for sanctioning theft and corrupting potential Abadaran worshippers, like honest politicians and alchemists, with the promise of illegitimate power. He is friendly with Erastil, god of farming, necessary for transitioning people from a nomadic lifestyle, though the two often end up at loggerheads over Erastil's desire to keep communities small and pastoral, as opposed to Abadar's sprawling urban utopia. Other deities frequently in the good graces of him include Eomede, goddess of justice and rulership necessary to preserve peace in the society, Idori, god of history and knowledge, crucial for maintaining a stable civilization, Shailen, goddess of art and music, excellent for bolstering civic spirit, and even Asmodeus, although only for the archdevil's belief in upholding laws and contracts. Abadar knows that his pursuits frequently anger Gozra, god of nature, who would like to see the natural parts of the world remain unspoiled. But he believes that the two of them can come, eventually, to reach a compromise. Few deities call the even-handed god a friend, but many, especially Aomade, who likes his attention to detail and planning, and Torag, who appreciates his devotion to law and commerce, consider him a valuable and pragmatic ally. He is on good terms with most imperial lords as well, especially Arqueros, patron of bodyguards, and Eldas, patron of architecture and planning. Like Abadar himself, his followers try to maintain a positive but reserved relation with followers of other gods. They understand that it takes many different cultures to keep society advancing, and so are extraordinarily tolerant of other viewpoints, or at least they strive to be so. Still, their dealings with the followers of the Green Faith and Gazra are difficult, for those faiths do not recognize the obvious virtues of civilization. Abadar's faithful remain confident that they can turn them to the Church's view at some point, though. Their primary immunity is with the monsters of Rovagug, Lamashtu, and the demon lords, while the children of the chaotic good gods can be obnoxious and immoderate. At least they mean well and tend not to destroy or damage society as grievously. Gorham's followers can be dangerous, for they worship only battle, and rarely are they used to looking at the results of their ways. 
Yet Abadar also understands that war is simply an extension of politics, which is in turn an extension of commerce, and thus is sometimes necessary for the advancement of civilization. Despite the Church's strong opposition to corruption, many of those who proclaim the merits of Abadar's worship most enthusiastically are prominent citizens in positions of power and wealth, and thus vulnerable to this failing. The Church prefers to handle its own problems quietly, though the leadership must balance the Church's desire for discretion against the need to demonstrate to members of faiths that their condemnation of corruption is sincere. The God of civilization resides in the the God of civilization resides in the eternal city of Axis, presiding over a district called Octun that centers on the first vault. Abadar's deific domain is distinguished by its own unique architecture, which blends together the styles of each mortal race that holds the God of civilization in high regard, as well as indicating an obvious boundary. While Avadar's domain does not possess any grand walls or barriers separating it from the rest of Axis, the gods' contractual agreements and arrangements with the plains natives make it unnecessary, entry can be obtained only through four points. Each such gateway is defined by and defended by a great freestanding archway of solid gold marked with Abadar's holy symbol of a golden key and watched over by his herald, Lawgiver. The Titan's presence graces each of the four gateways simultaneously, either by divine replication or by somehow existing in four places at once via arrangement with the Axiomite God-mind. It's likely that it exists in even more places simultaneously, since the gates are never unguarded, but Lawgiver is widely known to serve its patron on quests across the plains. While most creatures and planar powers are at least neutral toward the even-tempered Abadar, a few individuals have particularly distinguished themselves as friends of Abadar's faith. In addition to his servitor race, the horse-like Orshevals, the following are some of his best-known servants. Kabelhoof, who is a unique celestial hippogriff. This celestial hippogriff is tawny with a white head, and normally appears wearing a set of mithril breastplate barding, which is light enough for him so he can fly when wearing it. He is battle-trained and accepts a rider without question. Old Cobb rarely speaks, but understands common, celestial, and several other languages. He loves eating deer and cattle, and Presenting him with such a gift is a sure way to get him on his good side. He has grown feisty in his old age and doesn't appreciate youngsters talking down to him or treating him like a mere beast. The Ghost of Mirama In life, Mirama was a wealthy priest of Abadar who warned against the overcrowding in cities and encouraged the faithful to found new settlements rather than cramming together like rats. She now serves her god in death, sometimes appearing in the mortal world as a harbinger of coming plagues and warning residents to improve living conditions or move away. She has all the abilities of a specter except that she cannot create spawn, destroying her, even with the channeled positive energy, merely sends her back to Abadar's realm. Lawgiver, this massive golden statue-like golem, serves as Abadar's herald. 
This titanic golden statue of a great knight moves of its own accord and hefts a mighty war hammer. Hi everyone. I hope you liked Abadar and his information. Would have liked to have done more on Lawgiver, but it would have made this video much longer. Up next is Shailen, and I think you guys will like her. This content was made possible by travelers and viewers like you. Thank you.